Hi, I'm here with Keith Holterman. Keith is the Acting Chief Learning Officer for CISA. Keith, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it, thank you. So can you tell us a little, a little about what you're doing as the Chief Learning Officer and how you support the CISA mission space? So when uh, CISA began from its transition from NPPD, the National Programs Protectorate, uh, uh, CISA was interested in laying a strategic plan for training and education. Um, I had prior experience with this coming from FEMA as a former assistant administrator for uh, training and education programs over there. Uh, we were looking to replicate and perhaps feed into some of the larger uh, uh, policy of the United States coming from uh, the national training and education system, how CIS in particular would feed up to mm. the national training and education system. So are there a lot of similarities between CISA and what you were doing for FEMA? Very much so. Um, we had a lot of disparate uh, training and educational programs and what we wanted to do was to bring them together under one umbrella so that we had a better strategic way forward and we could combine up our business systems, our outreach strategies, um, how we procure and uh, develop curriculum uh, and bring it more into uh, a one FEMA, in this particular case, a one CISA approach. Okay, and... Pause for just one second, yeah. sorry, your microphone, hold on. Is it not working? It's working, it's just, um, I gotta move it up on your, it's just the head. Sorry, okay. I hate to interrupt. No problem. It's been great so far, you've been yeah. wonderful. Too many ums, I'm trying to no, get them no, out of there. No, 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 hey, you, you've been fine so far. Yeah, you've been I think great. it's out of control, I'll let you know. But I think you've been great. Okay. So what about giving us a little bit of a peek of some of the ideas that you think that we can go towards in terms of internal training and also providing external training? One of the things that we would like to see happen uh, in the short future really is the combination of all of our programming into one course catalog so that as folks can come to one site, one portal, and be able to look at what their career uh, requirements may be from a training and education and experiential standpoint and then match that up easily to programming that we have available as well as our partners on the outside. It's, it's essential that we don't see ourselves as the sole provider um, and that we integrate with the great training and educational programs that are in this mission space on the outside. We really want to partner up with folks so that students can maybe take some programming from us, some from somewhere else, maybe two or three other places, and then parlay that together into a career in cyber and take that on to be also education as they move through their uh, career ladder. Okay. Now, you are now a cybersecurity leader, but you didn't get your start in cybersecurity. I understand that you used to be in healthcare and right. do a lot of things. What, what's this journey been like for you? So uh, I'm non-traditional, and I think that plays to a lot of the folks also entering cyber. Uh, I started uh, my career early on as an emergency medical technician, became a paramedic, became a registered nurse, focused really on 911 systems and uh, the emergency medical service uh, services and was the director of some emergency medical service programs. Um, and I, what I became enthralled with and became so interested in really was public health. And when you go to see a doctor, for example, the doctor gives one patient a prescription for penicillin for an infection. But in public health, we look at the entire population and say, how do we better that entire population uh, through the use of our epidemiologic tools, we're able to make uh, better uh, uh, prescriptions so we would put, for example, a guardrail on dead man's curve, mm. right? Which would help a lot of people as they turn through dead man's curve. So the same thing holds here really for what I've become in terms of emergency management and working with FEMA and also working with science and technology is taking those underlying skill sets and applying them really to this emergency and homeland security um, domains. Uh, and how do we take folks with different types of backgrounds and have expertise in different backgrounds 
and bring them together so that we are very integrated in terms of our thought and uh, diverse in terms of who we're calling on to meet the challenges that we find in cyber every day. Mm. Um, we need folks that have background and understanding of healthcare, in cyber, in telecom, in many different domains, uh, not just somebody that understands the X and O's. Okay, wow. So you came here from FEMA then. Uh, what was it like to actually be asked to come from building what you've built? Because I, I believe we went to the, uh, the fire academy? We went to uh, the Emergency Management Institute and the National Fire Academy up at the National Emergency Training Center up in Emmitsburg. And uh, we had a very great discussion between the folks at CISA and the folks from FEMA, from both of those entities, and learning about how they in particular um, service their external customers, which mm -hmm. is huge. And um, you know, FEMA is doing a couple of million people a year with their online programming and many uh, tens of thousands on their campuses and their schoolhouses. And so how could CISA model itself similar to FEMA and where it makes sense? Perhaps we partner with FEMA and other departments and agencies so that we don't have to, number one, realize that cost, we can get to economies of scale, but also, more importantly, have our customers, internal and external, feeling comfortable about how they can understand one system mm. and not have to go to so many different portals and talk to so many people so they can understand the plethora of training and education that's available to them uh, in a very facilitated way. Wow, so I mean, we're, we're very lucky to have you here with us now because already we've seen a lot of um, you allowing us to utilize best practices in other places so we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. And uh, it's, it's exciting considering where we were five years ago. Because I, when I got here five years ago as to where we are now, and just simply the fact that five years ago a lot of the analysts we're having to do so much administrative work and having to do so much outreach and trying to do everything. And we've gotten to a point now because of people like yourself that the analysts can really focus on the work and they have a really good support network. So being that this is kind of where we've grown to, where do you see us going in the next five to 10 years? So uh, I believe that with the new organizational structure that CISA has adopted, mm -hmm. that facilitates all of what we're talking about in terms of um, being able to come together with a one CISA approach. And I believe that uh, we will be doing and supporting and looking for partner training, but I think education may be the next frontier. Mm. We know that a lot of folks can come in and support the uh, whether it be cyber or infrastructure and perhaps just have some basic skill sets but if we want them to progress in their career they have to be able to write comprehensively to be able to understand and uh, decipher policy mm. and those are some educational skills that they need so i think that we're the one of the places we're going to bridge into uh, in the future and five years down the road, we'll be also doing a lot more education along with the training that we're currently uh, impacting uh, the nation with. Okay, now last question. For the people that are probably watching this and thinking, boy, that sounds really interesting. I'd like to maybe try my hand at that. What kind of advice would you give someone that's either looking to move into the learning, like, like educational space of cyber or just cybersecurity in general? Well, uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt to begin to take programs in this area, but probably more importantly, uh, it's talking to folks uh, about your interest and finding a mentor uh, mm. at the local level and perhaps developing some type of internship if you're recently out of school uh, or even if you're uh, ending one career and looking to move into another. I believe that that mentorship piece is very important for folks to be able to share uh, their wealth of understanding of being in a, a specific domain and mastering a certain domain 
with others so that they can perhaps see what that person is seeing and then see themselves in that type of a job. So I like that you're saying that because um, it reminds me of a, a person here who asked me about mentors because I, I, I was asking her, who's your mentor? And she said, I, I don't have one. And so I was trying to coach her on, look, you need to get multiple mentors in different domains because these are the people that are going to you know, care about you. They're going to help you. And so she turns around and goes, well, how do I do that? How do I, how do I get mentors? And I said, just ask. So I, then the next day she comes to me and says, will you be my mentor? <laughs> and I'm like, I, yeah, okay. Uh, you straight up just asked. You well, know, I, go, g- give us some advice on that. So um, I think every employee needs to, to develop um, in, an individual development plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that plan, every year you need to set out goals of the training or educational programs that you're going to want. But you also need to set out goals of who you're going to meet mm. and who you're going to go and talk to. And um, whether that be at conferences and it's more fleeting in the moment you had an opportunity to spend the afternoon with someone and develop insight, but also then to develop a uh, relationship with somebody at work. Supervisors should be assisting in that and they should be looking at where someone is wanting to go with their career and the supervisor ought to be aiding that perhaps sending an email to someone in another division saying, hey, we've got somebody that's pretty interested in that work that you folks are doing over there. Could we send them over there to talk to you and perhaps spend a day or two with some of your people in that domain so that they could develop a better understanding? I think it's incumbent upon the supervisor. I think it's also incumbent upon our uh, Chico, the chief human capital officer, when they look at where CISA is going as a large organization and where we're going to need workforce in the future, making that known to the workforce, hey, in the coming years, we're going to need to fill out this area and we're going to need more people with this kind of a background and facilitating them to get there. Um, So that's through mentorship as well as um, providing some structure in terms of how you can go from one Uh, position to another. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And thank you for joining CISA. Love it here. Thank you. Okay.